Anyway, so have y'all tried the new uh, Oreo flavored Coke yet? Like, it's pretty interesting. I don't know how to fully feel about it. Like, yeah, it tastes like Coke, but there's also like that Oreo aftertaste to it. And I don't know how to feel about it, but like, I can't stop drinking it. This is my third bottle I bought at the gas station or whatever. Woo, that is weird. Also, all these new uh, chocolate flavored pretzels are also fucking dope as well. Like, you got the white chocolate Hershey's and the Reese's, and now there's the regular Hershey's flavored pretzels. I'm really digging them, even though I'm normally not a pretzel kind of person. And normally I like the white chocolate Hershey's better, but I think I prefer the regular Hershey's on the pretzels better. Anyways, with that out of the way, anyways, let's uh, cue the color grade. And let's talk about Transformers 1. So I just came back from the uh, early screening fan event, and I even got a poster and everything. Look, 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 where is it? Like legit, they, even, they were giving out posters and everything, and I even got a uh, keychain, a little keychain as well, a little Optimus Prime face. Look at that, ain't it cute? But yeah, no, so, I mean, for a long time now, right, we kind of knew that this movie was coming out. Like um, like last year, even Transformers Rise of the Beast, before that was even released, it was already announced that Chris Hemsworth was gonna be voicing a much younger Optimus Prime in a animated Transformers movie that was coming out this year, being, you know, Transformers 1. And you know, even back then, I was kind of skeptical with that idea. I mean, like, yeah, um, Chris Hemsworth is slowly proving himself as an actor and all but to take on the role of Optimus Prime you know you have you have really big shoes to fill in and you're going to get compared to Peter Cullen no matter what right and you might get compared to other Optimus Prime voice actors as well but like most notably it's Peter Cullen you want to really stand up to but at the same time it's also crazy because you want to capture the essence of Peter Cullen while putting your own twist on the character which, which is a really difficult task for Chris Hemsworth to do and then you had I keep forgetting his name but he was in Bullet Train uh Brian Tyree Henry uh in Bullet Train yeah, so Brian Tyree Henry, I thought I thought he did a great job in Bullet Train, but like to take on the task of Megatron, I also felt very weird about that. And there's also Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Trion. Personally, not my first pick for Alpha Trion, but honestly, I was quite satisfied with what I was given. And well, hold on, let me slow down for a second. But even back then, I was like, okay, I can see it working still nonetheless, and I still see it very appropriate. And then John Hamm as Sentinel Prime. I think that's like the only casting I've noticed and went, oh yeah, that's actually a very solid pick. There's also Scarlett Johansson as... Elita One and Keegan Michael Key as Bumblebee, and I thought they're fine, right? Like Keegan Michael Key, yeah, sure, I can see him working on Bumblebee. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Um, so it was Elita One, you know, we don't have a lot of on-screen representation for a character, so like your character could be literally be taken in almost any direction, and for the most part. So when I saw Scarlett Johansson, I was like, okay, uh, it's just basically it's basically just gonna be a Scarlett Johansson bot. That's all it is gonna be, and for the most part, yeah, let's say it, it kind of was. So now that the movie's out, well, at the time of this recording, and by the time it's gonna be uploaded. So be like another day or two away from being fully released to the public i will say i am thoroughly pleased with this movie i think it's the best transformers film since we've had since the 1986 entry and as much as i love the bay movies i love the big robots just blowing shit up and i really appreciate the physics in those movies as well like the transformers actually felt like really heavy metal and really like they actually felt like heavy machinery bashing each other and it really adds to the spectacle in those movies but however they just never really captured the essence of transformers per se when i was younger they had their like own magic to them right but like it's only because and i only say that because i like explosions that's about it really but transformers one this actually captures the magic and essence of what transformers is and is supposed to be and i really liked it and something i appreciate about this film that all the other films don't do so something i appreciate about this transformers film compared to the rest is that it probably has the most world building in accordance to the source material and you know michael bay definitely had his own twist on the transformers franchise and i do and i still appreciate it for what it is i thought it was pretty cool but i still think the source material is still the best transformers we have and you know the transformers one doesn't necessarily build on top of it but it takes heavy inspiration from it because in this story there's still a lot of you know creative differences in comparison to the source material Material, right and i will come back to that come back around to that later so to talk about the performances in this movie they were actually pretty solid so you know these are much younger versions of the characters that we know and love right so you know and it kind of you know almost derails my original concerns with the casting however i do feel like this is what the younger versions of what these characters would feel like and i'm talking about optimus prime and megatron while they're still orion packs and d16 right and you know there's still some changes from this original source material that they 
they had in this movie. Like they're both miners. They're both miners in the caste system of that Cybertron has, right? The caste system is very similar to what it was in the source material. Still a little changed a bit, but we're not gonna get into that. And these changes within the context of this movie and story, I think works. I'm okay with it. In a filmmaking perspective, it's fine. But overall, you know, the movie as a whole and for what it is, right? I really... I just really enjoyed it. I don't know what else to say, man. Like, it's just a really fun movie to watch. And, you know, it's also very competently written. Unlike all the Transformer films we have up to this point, right? Like the 07 Transformers had Promise, Revenge of the Fallen, and Dark Side of the Moon. Let's be real. They weren't the best written stories. I don't know what was going on with Age of Ultron. Oh, that's Avengers. I don't know what was going on with Age of Extinction. But I thought it had some cool ideas and premises that, that could have been explored upon better, but it wasn't. And then the last night was just a mess. We don't talk about the last night. Bumblebee also kind of like the 07 movie right showed some promise in the story and the rise of the beast same thing even though it's going in the right direction for the even though it's one step in the right direction for the transformers live action franchise it's still you know kind of lackluster all in all the bar isn't set very high i need a snack shit i completely forgot what i was about to say let me check let me check what i said in my letterbox as a reference yeah but all in all you know um this movie is clearly made with a lot of heart a lot of passion and a lot of love for the original source material and you know i think this is something that transformer fans have been like really craving for for like a very long time now me myself included also some of the easter eggs and callbacks throughout the movie was also done so well like like they make it obvious but like if you blink you're still gonna miss it right and i just really like the way it's handled right like it's not up in your face about it right or it's not shoehorned in just for the sake of fan service just this one is just quick it's brief it's done with it same thing with the humor like it's quick it's brief you say the punchline you don't carry on the gag be done with it also there's like a lot of concerns when this movie was coming out right especially when after the first uh movie trailer was released for this movie this movie almost feels like a family road trip movie and it's something that a lot of fans weren't happy with and even i also felt kind of skeptical with it i mean i was ready to embrace it for what it was but at the same time it's just not what i was hoping for or expecting and just like just like almost everybody else that was complaining about it was now that i've seen this movie it still kind of is a very light-hearted family-friendly movie however it's a family friendly that most people walks of life could still enjoy and appreciate like it's not too kiddish it doesn't ham in on the family friendliness right and the movie's tone actually shifts to a darker one as well at some point in the movie something that the mature audience are going to appreciate much more but even the maturity still kind of adheres to the family friendly nature of this movie and, but like ultimately what i'm saying is that there's a good balance of tone for audiences for all audiences across the board and you know chris hemsworth brian tyree henry they did a good job for what they're given and and to portray a younger version of characters that we know and love and i remember being the most skeptical with chris hemsworth as up <laughs> And I remember being most skeptical with Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime. But however, like, not only this is a good younger version of Optimus Prime, I feel like if he adjusts his tuning a little bit, I think he could be a very solid competitor to Peter Cullen. Don't get me wrong, Peter Cullen is still going to be supreme. And he's still going to be the de facto Optimus Prime. But Chris Hemsworth is probably going to be one of the best alternatives to Peter Cullen. And I believe that this is going to expand into, like, a bigger trilogy as well. So, like, and you know, this we know the Cybertron War lasted for, like, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years right so like we don't know when the next movie is going to take place it might be 200 years from where this movie ends maybe a couple thousands five thousands eons who knows and i think where chris hemsworth is as well as brian tyree henry i think they could really grow into the character i mean i do have some gripes with um brian tyree henry right like some of his cadence just doesn't feel right as megatron but then i have to remind myself oh this is still a younger megatron and there was even some points in the movie where his voice really reflects the megatron that i know so like i said you know if these two actors are able to grow i do think they're capable of coming to the point where they represent the characters that we already know and love and i'm very excited to see how that works out this movie for what it is i think is very good but that's not to say i don't have some of my own preferences and you know as i've expressed before in the past that i'm not a stickler to uh comic book accuracy or you know accuracy to the source material i am okay with certain changes here and there especially if it works within the context of the given story and i'm not gonna use my own preferences and biases to you know degrade a movie i'm not gonna let that affect my judgment of a movie in a filmmaking perspective but to talk about what my preferences are right like it all comes down to the demeanor 
designer and characterization of Orion Pax in D16. So I'm not a Transformers lore aficionado per se, but I like to think I know enough. Both these characters don't necessarily feel like Orion Pax or D16 per se. The original Orion Pax I know is a lot more reserved, a lot more meek, and he wasn't a minor. He wasn't part. He wasn't in the lower caste in the caste system. He was he was like a political archivist in the original source material. Whereas D16, I think was a minor, but he was also a very well-respected gladiator. Like between him and Optimus Prime, D16 was more of a brute. He was a lot more aggressive and much more outspoken than Optimus was, but he's also still very intelligent in his own right as well, like as a, as a battle tactician and battle strategist. And you know, the happy-go-lucky attitude that this Orion Pax has, felt kind of weird. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still works within what the movie is, but it's not what I personally want out of Orion Pax per se. And I get it, right? Like his name is Optimus Prime. He's supposed to be very optimistic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He could still have those values and those beliefs, but it doesn't mean his attitude has to reflect it, right? Or it doesn't mean his attitude can't be a lot more meek, a lot more modest, a lot more reserved, like the Orion Pax that I've always interpreted. If anything, in this movie, D16 was more by the books. He was more of the goody two-shoe between the two characters and that was really weird to see but those changes aren't the biggest deal in the world like like i said it works within the context of the movie that we're given like it doesn't change the fact that you know the story that we're given was still competently told you know but i will say the characterization around sentinel prime is definitely consistent with how i've always seen the character and you know no complaints there so I'm going to interject in real quick because I forgot to, because I forgot to talk about this while I was you know filming the video but I guess you could say there's some minor spoilers so go ahead and skip to this time if you want to just avoid it altogether just in case if it's really in case it's much bigger than it actually is but what I'm saying but basically what I want to say is I'm not the biggest fan of Ops's Prime and Megatron's design language at the end of the movie because something about their look was just too sterile because by the end of the movie you know they have or they finally assumed the leadership of you know their respective factions right and you know and the appearance and their appearance don't how do i say this their appearance don't strike me as leadership worthy or not necessarily not leadership worthy per se but like you know they don't command the presence or yeah yeah they don't demand the presence of a leader and and you know their attitude and behavior might but like it just doesn't match up with their the, um design style or art style of the character design and you know there's kind of a small disconnect there for me and you know most people might not notice it very much some people might you know be fine with it but maybe i'm just really picky but yeah for the most part like the animation and the art style throughout the movie is very good right it's just that you know i really i i felt how do i say this the their final form their final design at the very end of the movie just felt very lackluster it could have been more like just add a little more bulk to it add a little more texture add a little more bulk than oh and add a little more size because the entire movie i think uh what's his face sentinel prime was pretty big in comparison to everybody else or and then you know as soon as d16 fully becomes megatron and orion pax fully becomes optimus prime you know i think they're still smaller than sentinel prime which is kind of odd but yeah like i said you know um i think i believe this is confirmed to be a trilogy so maybe they'll alter the design as the movie goes on or as the series goes on but we'll see but yeah that's just my two senses on you know the art design of Optimus prime and megatron yeah but all in all i'm just really happy with this movie like full stop like this movie is almost two hours long but like it felt like an hour and a half like i was just having so much fun with this movie and you know i'm just enamored with how it was also able to tell a very competent story and like i said all the callbacks all the easter eggs were done really well they were handled well and they were handled with a lot of love and care for the source material and you know i'm just really excited to see where this separate continuity goes characterization around shockwave felt very off-putting for me as well i should probably point that out i don't know man he's just not the same code calculated emotionless machine like he was in the source material but anyways um those are my thoughts on transformers one i really really enjoyed this film and you know i still like the live action stuff as well you know i still appreciate them for what they are and um but however i do think there are some notes that the live action could take from this movie but yeah that's about it really do y'all plan to see the movie once it comes out and if you guys are watching this after you've seen it what do you think let me know and 
continuing with all you know all that YouTube bullcrap, like subscribe, comment, just something, guys, just boost me in the algorithm, just something. But yeah, that's about it. See y'all.